Welcome to another new segment, I believe. I don't think I've done any basic comic reviews. This is going to be comic reviews, old, new, just a variety of whatever I read that week. And I'll just talk about it. Maybe you'll find something that you might want to pick up in the near future or from the past. See if you can find it in a bargain bin or something like that, you might get lucky. Otherwise, pick it up or tell your stores to order it for you, wherever you get your comics, online or in the store or however you get your stuff. Let's check out some interesting comics that I read this week. Check out Betty and Veronica, Friends Forever. At the movies. Lights. Camera. Action. Betty and Veronica are back with this collection of fun tales that see the two iconic EFFs get the Hollywood treatment and experience some matinee madness. Will the girls become a cinema sensation, or will it turn into frantic film fiasco? Classic-style Betty and Veronica make their return in this all-ages comic featuring four stories from writer Bill Goliher and fan-favorite Archie Comics artist Dan Parent. Standard Archie look and feel, wonderful storylines. First one's kind of a little Johnny Depp Pirates of the Caribbean parody <laughs> for the fun little monkey. <laughs> and it messes with everybody throughout the story because, well, Veronica sets off all the problems to start with. But yeah, that was interesting. Then we got Betty, Veronica, and Archie in a movie mix-up. This is your standard story where you make too many dates for one night and you got to compensate for it. And you just have to watch it to see what hap happens. Uh, the third story is called Extra Disastrous, where, again, Veronica is just getting herself in the way, causing problems. And they're trying to be part of a movie, but things happen that mess them up, mess with everything. And then we have an unliving doll, which is a story about Betty and Veronica going to the horror movies, being a Chucky style movie, and coming home being stuck in the dark in the mansion and the mind goes wild and things happen and they just they have their own little living doll that they have to <laughs> deal with. <laughs> but yeah, those are always a lot of fun. Uh they're usually just one shots as far as I know. And I uh picked up another one recently, Betty and Veronica. Friends Forever Game On. Welcome to the next level. A brand new story kicks off this, this collection of tales of video games, digital drama, and virtual reality realness. In Be Glitched, Sabrina joins Betty, Veronica, and the gang for some fun at the Riverdale Arcade. Unbeknownst to her, rival Amber Nightstone, along with her new pals, Trick and Treat, arrive on the scene to cause some magical MMORPG mayhem. Classic style Betty and Veronica make their return in this all-ages comic featuring a new story from writer Ron Robbins and artist Dan Parent. Plus, even more exciting stories featuring the talents of George Bettier, Howard Bender, Pat Kennedy, Bob Smith, Henry Scarpelli, Bob Bowling, Rex Lindsay, Ken Selig, Glenn Whitmore, Dickicor or Digicor Studios, Jack Morelli, and Bill Yoshida. This was I like this one better. <laughs> Video gaming, of course. But yeah, the first one you get that story with Sabrina, and it was a lot of fun to see, and you got little Mario Brother parodies, other you're going to have parodies from a variety of your video games and video game systems throughout this. And it's just lots of fun. Watching 
what they go through to try and solve things and get through the day. Uh, we have a rival story where Betty and Veronica, well, Betty's nowhere to be found, and Veronica hunts her down and finds out that Betty's making a video game. And at the same time, Veronica's supposed to be on a date with Archie, but she's trying to figure out what's up with Betty, and you'll have to read it to see what happens. But it was definitely lots of fun. Then we got Archie and Zowie, where Archie is just hanging out at a game studio, and the guys are like, well, hey, take our new game, try it out, see if you like it, play it, and you can just imagine what happens when Archie gets into the game and just gets absorbed by it and gets in trouble with the girls, as usual. But yeah. Those were a lot of fun. I like that. Uh, I'm surprised to have that many talents and only three stories, though. I'm curious why there's that many people involved in the other two stories. Because there aren't any, like, not that I remember, any little one-pagers one or anything that were popped in there, but. Yeah, definitely worth checking out if you like the Archie gang. Uh, from our friend that joined our podcast, Crimson Color Comic Club, Troy Dungara. We got Kid Slapshot versus Zamboni. This is probably one of my favorite newer versions of Kid Slapshot storylines. I love the big Zamboni moose in this story. We start out the storyline with a character from our last story just all bummed out, wishing he had a super suit. And Kid and Dilsey, if you don't know who Dilsey is, that's Kid's little zombified skeleton in a pickle jar head buddy that hangs out with him. And, uh, This looky Lou character is mad at Kid Slapshot in the past, and that's why he made the Major Extreme character to take down Kid Slapshot, and all kinds of things happen. You'll have to go back and read those stories. They're wonderful. I've li loved everything so far from the Kid Slapshot universe. You get an awesome poster in the center here. And on the other side of that poster... At center fold, if I can open it, you'll find stories and uh, pictures by fans, including a story by yours truly that got in there. But yeah, this is just so well done. I love the Zamboni character. I hope we get to see him. I, it's kind of hard to really see him as this version in the future, but uh, I'm hoping we still get to see him again somehow, some way, some shape and form in the future because he is a lot of fun. Check out anything Kid Slapshot because Troy Dungar is a wonderful job with that character. Definitely one of my new favorite characters over the past couple of years and I've just been borrowing anything that comes out with it so then we got the intergalactic nemesis number one to seven of seven they had this pack of comics at a shop for really cheap and uh, issue number one had what six five signatures on it I think and it's like basically everybody involved with the book or six signatures or one, two, three, or yeah, five signatures with an extra little note. But yeah, and it's like I got it for I think it was a dollar a comic or something like that in the pack. It was so cheap. And it comes with all those signatures. It's like, well, I'm not going to pass that up. I got to check it out. But 
when Pulitzer winner Molly Sloan and her assistant Timmy Mendez stumble upon an assassination attempt in Romania, a mysterious stranger saves their lives just in time. Turns out the story they've been chasing is a dead end. But could the map they've discovered lead to something bigger? Three days later, at Lord Crawford's 55th birthday party in Scotland, the world-famous mesmerist Mysterian the Magnificent unveils a terrible surprise. The Mesmographer, or Mesmographer, Mesmographer, <laughs> Mesmographer, <laughs> Mesmographer. I don't know, something like that. A machine designed to turn a room full of people into mind slaves. As Timmy falls prey to this infernal device, Molly discovers that Lord Crawford has a terrible secret himself. But yeah, this... Let's see, here's your little Lord Crawford character. Oh, he's actually, there's a better picture of him right there on the Mesmeron or Mesmeron or Mesmerian character. But it starts out, it's kind of got like a uh, older historic um, feel to it. As far as storyline basis, I mean, your, our main characters, Timmy and the girl, are kind of like a reporter and her sidekick. And you find out that they're actually, their positions are kind of swapped. I, I, I don't want to ruin it. Because this is very interesting. I picked it up because of all the autographs for such a cheap price. And I ended up with such a wonderful story. I just could not put these down. I had to finish it off. And it starts out with the Dracula feel and the old-timey Universal Monsters feel. And then it jumps into more of a Tesla feel. And just it kind of floats on it. And you can tell, like, here how she's dressed up with the old school bonnet hat and stuff. And, yeah. Timmy with his newspaper reporter hat type feel to him, like Jimmy Olsen feel to the character. And it, yeah, I kind of get the Lois and Jimmy Olsen feel with these two characters. That That is a big little uh, twist to it. And then it also has the Indiana Jones feel, like when they're going searching for something. And they come across these unique, weird characters that just end up, they have to finagle things and all that. And it's just, yeah, it, this was a big surprise. I did not expect to like this. I uh, figured for sure, I'm like, yeah, it doesn't really give me anything from the main cover because it was all wrapped up in plastic. So I could only see, I think, issue number one. and the issue number seven cover. No, that wouldn't, I would have remembered that picture. <laughs> that would have definitely drawn me in with the alien species, but I'm not sure which cover they had. But like, things that I've seen were so base, were basic covers, and then this, a basic cover and a sign cover. <clears throat> so I felt, yeah, for that price, I'll check it out. And then we even get a little Dick Tracy <laughs> in there. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a unique uh, twist on the whole explorative style, Indiana Jones style feel, uh, space adventure. Uh, you get some very unique alien species and ships and all that. It's just, yeah, I like this. If you're into sci-fi, this would be a fun one for you to check out. Uh, we're done by Jason Newlander. Did the script. Pencil and ink by Tim Doyle. Color art by Lee Duig. And lettering by Doug Blinn. And it looks like this is done by who knows I have no idea this must have been an independent company 
that did the book, or they've got it printed themselves. So it might actually be pretty hard to find. But uh, yeah, I, it, and they have a thing on the back here of the last one. Uh, those are just some some little quotes from people. But yeah, I I definitely would read more of that if there are more stories based off that those people and stuff. That was enjoyable. And then the last one I'm on top talk about today is typhoid fever iron fist number one this is my well i will give the synopsis first after a series of run-ins with the superhuman community mary mary walker was institutionalized in the hopes of curing her dissociative identity disorder her treating physician a mysterious man known only as dr charles Attempted a radical treatment to restore her sanity. Another patient under his care, a young mutant named Zachary, codename Amp, has the unique ability to amplify other mutants' powers. Dr. Charles utilized Amp's ability and tried to target and amplify the parts of Mary's brain inhabited by her peaceful original personality. But the procedure went horribly wrong. And Mary's peaceful personality wasn't the one that got a boost. Now typhoid is loose in the streets of New York, and some of the city's citizens are falling under her spell, including Spider-Man and the X-Men, who have begun fighting amongst themselves. We got writer Clay Mc McLeod Chapman, Paolo Villanelli is the artist, Rochelle Rosenborg. Berg is the colorist, and DC's Travis Lankham is the letterer, and it's done by Marvel Comics. It's kind of funny how I got introduced to this Typhoon character, or Typhoid, or Typhoon, or, and all of a sudden, I started seeing her popping up in some of the newer comics that are coming out lately, and, uh, yeah, she's got some interesting abilities and powers, and I'd like to know more about her. But I didn't feel like this was really... I mean, there is a battle with her and Iron Fist in here, but I suppose this is issue one, so this does go deeper. But, yeah, we got a variety of... X-Men character fallbacks and stuff in here and just learning more about this Typhoid Mary style character. I just I don't know what to think about her yet. I want to know more and now that she's popping up everywhere I might have to check out and see more about her. But yeah, we you can see a variety of the X-Men and stuff dealing with issues in here. And this one came out in 19... Oh, no, this was a 2019. So that's... That's not bad. Mary Walker is a talented mutant gifted with telekinetic and pyrokinetic powers. Once an aspiring act actress, Mary's plans for her future were derailed by her multiple personality disorder that manifests itself in extremely destructive personality. Typhoid Mary and Bloody Mary. When these personalities break through, it can only mean typhoid fever. So yeah, you get a little crossoid of typhoid Mary with Bloody Mary. Yeah, I can see some problems there. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I like this character. I want to know more about her, but we'll let's see what happens in the future. See what we come across. I'll definitely be picking up at least one of the newer comics with her in it, just to see what's all going on with that character and see where she's going. 
only downfall is with the whole Lazarus Lazarus planet storyline and everything like that. It's a lot of characters, their abilities have changed or diminished because of that. And you kind of got to wait for them to recover before you sit there and get the full gist of the actual character, what they're supposed to be all about and stuff. But we will see. See if I find one that catches my eye. Uh, that's it for the stack today. Uh, fun little stack of comics. Still don't know what I'm going to call this segment. I'll figure it out maybe by the time I post it. And we'll have a lot more like this coming in the future because I am trying to get to more video reviews and less uh, audio reviews. Just because you get more following through the video. But if I can link the video into audio, then I will do that also. But keep following Under the Cull of MS, audio video, wherever you can find it. Just look up at Under the Cull of MS. And that will give you all the links you need. I will have links in the show notes, hopefully, if I ever remember. <laughs> I don't think I put them in most of my postings because I just don't think about it. Uh, Check out Crimson Color Comic Club. We've been having a lot of great comic book creators uh, popping in on the show lately. Uh, we've had we got more coming up very soon, and a lot of fun comics coming out that we are promoting of local and near local comic creators. So check those out. We're getting more audio, more videos coming. A few more new segments coming out here pretty soon. We're going to probably do a drawing segment. And you can also check out some of the artwork I've been posting that I just started doing. I took a good 20 plus years off of drawing because of my multiple sclerosis. I just kind of got in a deep, dark depression because of my hand twitches and my hand jumpiness. and just kind of destroyed my tattooing and drawing abilities. And I just, the last tattoo I did, I was doing a design on a lady and my hand jumped so much that the needle popped off the bar, off the gun, and just the whole needle and bar was left in her flesh. And I had a, I took it out and relaxed for a bit and finished off the tattoo. And that was the end of my tattooing career. <laughs> and that was before tattoos became fa so famous that. Everybody and their brother and sister are doing tattoos. Back in the day when you had to actually prospect for a shop and suffer for a year or two or however long before you actually got the tattoo. Uh, the days where we worked for it, so you basically worked for free for many years or a year at least a year for as an apprentice before you started making any money but that was your way of paying your dues to the shop to learn the tricks of the trade but nowadays anybody can do it and the sad thing is everybody anybody does do it and granted you got some incredible artists out there nowadays you also got a lot more non-incredible artists that are just sticking stuff on people that they're going to have to take off themselves in the future. But why I'm on this rant right now, I have no idea. It's my MS brain. But keep following us. Tell a friend. Check it out. We're going to come back with a lot more in the near future. I have a feeling we're going to keep doing these review videos. A nice little stack of comics. Lots of fun. Check them out. Lots more good ones to come. And some bad ones, I'm sure.
Talk to you soon. Bye.